Guys, this is Randy here. Uh, again, I've got about 40 plus years of building the Holly carburetors. And I just want to explain to you the power valve and how it works. There's so much information out there. Some of it isn't right. I just want to show you what it does and what, how it works. The power valve is usually either stamped on the back of this power valve or on the side. This particular one's on the side. And it's a six and a half inch power valve, a 65, which is 6.5. That means when we pull six and a half inches of vacuum or greater over here, we close this power valve like this. It's closed. And when you accelerate, the vacuum drops, the power valve opens, and it's just like another set of jets, the rich in the mixture. Now this power valve, people got it in their head, it makes a difference at idle whether this power valve is open or closed. It has no effect on the idle at all unless this diaphragm is ruptured or unless this gasket is leaking. It has no effect on the idle because it pulls fuel through the booster. The idle is a strictly a separate circuit. Okay, and I want to get into something real quick and show you there's, there's two window power valves there with just two inlets right here and then there's these here like I got. That's four. That's called a high flow power valve. It's got a lot of space in between the actual panel and the, and the wall of the power valve. You can see it when it moves. So it's going to flow a lot of fuel through here and out this window. But it doesn't really matter how much the power valve flows as long as you're getting enough. I run the biggest power valve, the high flow power valve on all my carburetors because when we're looking at this metering block, let me get this one over here. It's a little better, a little cleaner. The power valve screws in here like so. And it comes all the way up to the meter block with the gasket seals right here. So this area is sealed and this area is sealed with the threads. So only thing that matters is how big this orifice is. This orifice is what is on each side. There's two orifices, power valve restrictions, power valve circuit restrictions. That's, that's what is like another set of jets. It goes right in to this main well. There's the jet hole. It feeds up this main well and it comes out the back right here to the booster. Well, this hole for the power valve, let me get something I can point a little closer. These little holes right here are the restrictions. That's what determines the flow, not, not the power valve. The power valve has got to supply enough flow for those restrictions. But if you put the biggest power valve in there to start with, you're not going to have no problem. Just make sure you got the right vacuum power valve. Though. If you're if you're running 12 inches of vacuum, make sure you got a five and a half or six and a half power valve. And for an automatic car, check your vacuum in gear too, not just out of gear, but in gear. Standard shift, it doesn't really matter. All right. Now what I'm trying to get at is this: these both these holes and the main jets are flowing in the same spot through these tubes. So it has nothing to do with the fuel coming down here to the idle circuits. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, there's a big misconception about that. But anyway, what I want to show you, here is how the power valve works. I've got the spring out of this power valve. All right. If you can see the hole around this edge, that's where the fuel comes in from this direction from the actual metering block and it travels around this area right here and then when the vacuum is applied to this side of the diaphragm it closes it just like that and it can't get no fuel to flow through these windows until it opens back up it's hard to see with the spring on it you can you can see what I'm talking about that's closed that's open but the fuel, most people don't even know where the fuel flows. It flows right around this tapered orifice. And that tapered orifice is what pulls, when it pulls closed, seals it. Okay. Now these little power valves, they can be numbered on the back side of the power valve, or they can be numbered on the side. This particular one's on the side. It's a 45. It's a four and a half inch power, power valve. In other words, at four and a half inches of vacuum, on this side, above it, it is closed like this. And then as it starts going below four and a half, it slowly opens up. All right. I just, a lot of people don't realize that this bushing here, the old ones had a real tight bushing 
in here. They had a real tight bushing and they had very little flow through it, through the stem part of it, through actually this part right here where the actual stem goes through it, through the housing. And it's got to have that extra clearance there to make it where you can flow, optimum flow, through a full window. If it had a tight area in there around that bushing, it wouldn't flow. It wouldn't matter how big these windows are. Okay. It's also known as, a, back, back in the years, they used to call it a economizer valve. Because what it does, fuel flows through these jets. Now, the jets aren't in here right now, but that's where they screw in. And they come up through the main well, which so does the power valve. It feeds through the same main well through these restrictors right here. Through right here. All right. Now, and they come out right here on each side to the booster. So that's why I say it has nothing to do with the idle circuit. When, when, when fuel is flowing through these jets, coming up here and coming through here, it'll run this carburetor at any given steady speed. But when you go to accelerate, you've got to have your accelerator pump to get that first initial amount of fuel in, and then you have to have the power valve, which is going to open up and flow just like almost another set of jets. Not maybe quite as much, but it'd be close to it. And that's what enriches the mixture. We don't lose any signal here off the jet when you're accelerating. You lose nothing. If you lost signal here at the jet, you would lose signal at the power valve because they're coming through the same exact circuit. Okay, so you have to have all three things. You have to have the jet at any given steady state, any, any given cruise speed. It's fine just running on it. The power valve's closed, or it should be, if you got the right power valve in it. And then when you go to accelerate, the accelerator pump squirts, automatically the power valve opens up and you get acceleration. When you get up to that given speed you want to get up on the expressway, you're running 65, you're at a steady cruise, power valve closes, you're not using the pump no more, you're holding pretty much a steady speed, all you need is the main jets. Okay, well this, this is just to kind of clarify a few things where you could understand where the fuel flows around this orifice here, this tapered orifice, it closes up, and this, if you look at it, this, screws on here just like so with the gasket. I ain't got the gasket on it. But the fuel is on this side of the meter block. Here's the bowl. When this is open, the fuel is just flowing right out of the bowl through here and when it's closed, it's sealing it off. So that's the whole problem. Now if this diaphragm ruptures, then it'll make it run rich and idle. It'll make it run, stay open all the time, the power valve and it'll suck fuel from through that diaphragm and make the idle extremely rich. That's the only way, though. All right, that's just a quick video. And one other thing, here's a block off. If you're not going to use a power valve in the rear meter block, you just use a block off with a gasket, and you, you just stick it in there, and you bring it down and tighten it down, and then you, you've got nothing there. You just jet up six to eight jets, and you'll be good. You might have to play with it a little bit, but six to eight is usually real close. Six to eight sizes up on the jet. All right, but uh, this is this is Randy again. Uh, I hope y'all like these videos. I hope they help you, and we'll do some more. We're going to do accelerator pump. We're going to do an in-depth, more idle circuit. Finish that up too later on. All right, y'all have a good night. Thank you for watching.